This is my 1963 Chevy Corvair Monza Spider turbo convertible project car. The previous owner parked it up in the mid 70s and as far as I know, it hasn't moved under its own power since. We did get the engine running again. That was in a previous video. If you haven't seen that, check it out. It was quite the adventure. The condition of the car is poor. The interior is stained, mildewed, torn, frayed, cracked, and decayed everywhere you look. The brakes don't work, and the suspension components are suspect at best. The electrical system includes stripped, tangled, and corroded wiring, and I don't know if the generator even works. The gas in the tank has almost certainly turned to varnish by now, and I don't think the fuel pump works at all. The tires are dry rotted and clearly unsafe, and the body has serious rust issues, including many areas of rust through. There are also some amateur body repairs from the remote past on this car. All this means that in order to return this car to a safe, reliable, and presentable condition, we're going to have to more or less take it completely apart and put it back together again. With me working on it, who knows how long that's going to take. And I think she deserves one last road trip before we start the long process of restoration. Now, not only is this car far from roadworthy, I'm far from an expert. Will it run and drive? I'm gonna give it a shot. This car only runs when it's being gravity fed fuel from an external source. If we're gonna get it back on the road, we're gonna to have to have a fuel system that includes a fuel pump and an intact fuel tank with good fuel in it and open fuel lines. And I wanna start with the fuel pump because I haven't demonstrated that it works at all. In order to do that, we're gonna to have to prime it with some gas from an external source, crank the engine and see if it pumps anything. Oh no, I just broke this tube right here. Just going to the intake. Not sure what it's for, but it just snapped. Okay. Just as I was about to get that thing free too. That's too bad. There's fuel leaking out of the fuel pump. And I mean, it is leaking like crazy from these gaskets and everything here. So I don't think I need to test this pump any further to know that it is not going to suffice in its current condition. So the bad news is we've got a very leaky fuel pump. But the good news is, somewhere in this box, right there, we've got this replacement pump. Is it the right year? The 1960 models had a longer shaft sticking out the bottom. This looks like, you know, to me it looks short, but I don't know what it's supposed to look like. So we've got another pump we can try out at least before we decide on ordering something else. Before we go to the trouble of replacing the existing leaky fuel pump with this extra fuel pump we found in the car, I just want to do a leak test on this one. I have the fuel pump hooked up to a gravity feed fuel container, and that line is going into the inlet port of the pump, and then the outlet is just spilling into this fuel can. So we're going to open these valves and just inspect the pump for leaks. Fuel is flowing through this pump. I don't see any signs of leakage so far. It's totally dry. 
Doesn't mean it works. Nuts already loose. Like finger loose. I thought it'd be kind of cool to crank the engine and see the action of the fuel pump rod there as it oscillates up and down on its eccentric cam. Let's see what it does. Yeah, seems like it's working. I mean, I don't know how much it's supposed to move. It doesn't seem like it's moving up and down a lot, but I guess that's enough. Someone else can tell me if that looks right or not. I might look in there with my scope to see if there's alignment there. So here's the scope looking into the hole where the bolt goes. And as I turn this, you can see the hole in the pump lining up there. I have to push down the pump and I can feel it engaging the cam there to really get it to line up. So what I can do is really line that up and then get that retaining bolt and put it in there. It's in there snug, real snug. Here's my test rig for the fuel pump. I've got a gravity feed fuel container that is connected by a fuel hose to the fuel pump inlet. And then the outlet is draining to this clear plastic container with a shutoff valve here. I'm gonna start by just opening the fuel to gravity and just letting it flow through the pump by gravity. The idea being that that'll prime the pump. Now we've lowered our fuel source to more of a gas tank level, and we're going to see if the fuel pump actually pumps fuel now that it's primed. Sure seems like it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict the other end of the fuel and see what kind of fuel pressure we develop on the fuel gauge. Okay, that quickly popped up above six, and I don't know if that's gonna continue and damage the pump, so I'm gonna stop there, but clearly this pump is capable of developing at least five PSI of pressure against a complete restriction. So I think that's a pretty good test. I think this pump, there's no reason it shouldn't work that I can think of. We seem to have a working mechanical fuel pump, so the next thing I want to do is test the patency of the fuel line coming from the fuel tank. And I'm going to do that with a little compressed air. Hook this up. Let's just see. Let's get a feel for it. Well, I mean, it's blowing air, but is it leaking. Makes me wonder if it's obstructed. What I'd like to do is inject air into the fuel line while listening at the gas tank filler to see if I can hear air rushing into the tank. I don't hear a 
thing. I don't hear a thing coming through there. Okay, now we're in the fuel, in the tank, and I'm going to inject some air in there, or try to. See if we see any bubbles or any movement of the fuel. I don't see anything. There's just no air getting through there. We got this engine running from a gravity feed. Let's try to get it running from a fuel pump. Can't use the native tank yet because I think the fuel lines are clogged and the gas tank is full of old fuel. But we can test run it on the fuel pump itself and see if we can get it going. Let's see what happens. I've got a fuel pressure gauge right there, but it's not hooked up to anything yet. I might hook that in later and see how the fuel pressure is going. see any fuel leaks. It's idling nicely. Yeah, a lot of smoke coming up from there. so much. Right over there. I think there's just some exhaust leak in the exhaust system. It's also a lot of dirty oil on that engine maybe burning off. I'm going to shut it down now. happy with that running on this uh, fuel pump I know these fuel pumps uh, these OEM mechanical fuel pumps a lot of the replacement pumps are not reliable the original pumps apparently were pretty reliable but some of these replacements uh, you get are not so good maybe this is uh, from an earlier stock maybe way back when when they were well it says made in USA right on the top I mean that could be new old stock from back in the day I wouldn't think with those diaphragms, though, I think they'd probably oxidize and go bad. And I don't see any fuel leaks on this fuel pump at all. Really happy with that. Okay, now we have a fuel pressure gauge teed into the fuel line from the fuel pump. So let's run the engine again and see what kind of fuel pressure this pump is generating. Six PSI. 
RSI, which I understand is a little higher than you would like. In fact, right now it's getting up to 7 PSI. There really should be a return line from the fuel filter to the fuel tank to relieve that pressure. Seems to be holding stable at 7 PSI. Maybe that's okay. Or maybe when I get the fuel line sorted out from the tank, I'll go ahead and add a return line. I'll have to sort that out. That's pretty good though. It starts up right away. Check it out. Look at that. Fantastic. One thing I should and could do is test to make sure that oil is going to the turbo while the engine is running. A simple way to do that would be just to take this off and see if oil squirts out of there when we crank the engine. Oil is being pushed into the turbocharger, whether it's of sufficient pressure or quantity, volume, I don't know. Okay, it's nice and tight. You wipe that off and crank again, make sure it's sealed. See any oil coming out of there. We got a gas tank full of fuel that's probably been sitting in there for almost 50 years. The fuel lines seem to be clogged right now. So I'm going to start the process of getting a working fuel tank by emptying this fuel tank out. All right, we got most of the fuel from the tank out of there. There's still some left, but we're just not gonna get all of it out with the siphon technique. Next thing I wanna do is disconnect from the sending unit, check the fuel line for obstruction going forward from the gas tank, and also try it going back to the gas tank because I think we're probably gonna isolate the obstruction somewhere in the sending unit. And then we're going to pull that sending unit out. That'll get rid of the rest of the gas in the tank. And we'll be able to check out that sending unit, clean it up a little bit. Hopefully get a functioning fuel system. I suspect that the fuel that just came out was leaking back retrograde from this line because there was a lot more fuel in the tank than what just came out. And so I'm thinking that the sending unit is blocked off this way. So I'm gonna try forcing air back this way 
and force an air in that way and see which, if either, I can put air through. right off of there. I think that's really blocked off. On the other hand, I hear that blowing out at the rear of the car. Yep, I sure do. So that line, I believe, is clear. Now I'm gonna blow from the other end, and you tell me if that glove blows up. That sounded like a yes. I gotta say, that was a pretty cool little experiment. <laughs> that line's uh, just fine. It conducted air right in there. With just a couple little puffs, it blew that glove right out. So our problem is with a blockage here at the sending unit. So we're gonna have to work on that. We'll pop that sending unit out of there next. What we have here is a retainer ring and we've gotta punch that to get it to rotate so that it comes off. But look how rusty it is. I think we got a challenge here in getting that thing off. Let's get to it. to get a good angle on that. I'm actually just damaging that tab there instead of rotating the ring. Can't really take a blowtorch to it, can I? It's next day. I've spent a fair amount of time banging on this fuel sending unit ring to try to free it up, and all I'm really doing is bending the tab that you're supposed to pound on to get it to twist. This thing is rusted solid in there. I think the metals are fused. I think even if I dropped this tank out of here and got on a bench, I'd have a tough time getting that sending unit off. And if I did, I'm not sure that I could get it back on with a good seal. So now we're talking about going down a rabbit hole and all kinds of mission creep where I'm Pulling the fuel tank out now, when I really should save that for when I'm disassembling the car for more of a complete restoration versus just taking this thing for a joyride. Because if I'm gonna take this tank out, I gotta take this sway bar out and its connections are also rusted in there pretty good. So I think we're gonna have to look for an alternative solution if our goal is just to get this thing moving under its own power. So let's think about how we could just solve that in a little more primitive and simple way. the safest arrangement but I think this might get us going down the road once I fill this bottle up a little more I won't have to perch it on the edge like that I can get it a little bit more secure but it does seem the car is capable of pumping fuel from that auxiliary tank in the back seat and keeping the engine running it's gonna look a little weird going down the road I guess I'm gonna do something for the first time. I'm gonna stop and start this car from inside here. Hopefully.
almost like driving a real car. Okay, we've got a fuel system that should at least get us going down the road for a little joyride. Nothing permanent, but it'll allow the engine to run on its own. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is to be able to stop the car once we get it rolling. And to do that, we need brakes. And there's no brakes in this car at all. I know very little about brakes, so this should be interesting. I guess we'll start with the master cylinder, take a look in there and see what it looks like. Dry as a bone. So what I'm thinking is we put some brake fluid in there, bleed the lines out, see what we got. I guess I better first figure out where I'm gonna bleed it to. This is the passenger side rear wheel. I understand you want to start the bleeding process from the most distant point from the master cylinder and work your way to the closest point. So we would start with this wheel. I do see the bleeder nipple right there. It's a little hard to get to. Uh, so I think what I want to do is go ahead and remove this wheel, be able to get my head in there a little bit better so I can observe the bleeding process more efficiently. Y'all won't believe what just happened. That video cut off there because I was wearing my Apple Watch and when that hubcap fell off and made a big noise, um, my watch thought that I had fallen and was getting ready to call 911. And I had to tell it I'm okay and I didn't fall. And that also stopped the camera recording. Uh, so sorry you didn't get to all see that, but as many of you have pointed out, I should not be wearing a watch of any kind while I'm working on cars. So maybe I learned my lesson there finally. I took it off. I went ahead and loosened these up uh, just like I did on the other side. And now I'm gonna lift up the back of the car and pull these wheels off. rusted on there. Oh boy. Let's try the other side. No problem there. Set this underneath the cars and added catch. Something failed.
We're gonna have to work on that other wheel getting it off. I can see that these drums are very rusty and I imagine they've rusted to the back side of that wheel. So probably just need to pound on it a little bit. Give it a little encouragement. So a quick Google search tells me that one way to get this off is to put a couple of lug nuts back on the wheel so that the wheel just doesn't fall off as you're hitting it. And then I'm just going to rotate the wheel as I whack on it with a rubber mallet on the other side. <laughs> I'll tell you what, she's on there good. And I mean good. Rusty. I don't want to damage the wheel by doing this. I'm going to be careful about how much force I'm using. Yeah, it's just really rusty. I mean, I'm really glad these wheels weren't locked up. Might as well pull the drum off while we're at it. She's a little stuck. There we go. I mean, the surface looks smooth without any grooves in it, I think, yeah? I think so. Pads are present. They look okay. The next thing I want to do is just establish that we can get this bleeder to turn. Without breaking. Torque on that, maybe. Good. Okay, let's try the other side.
All right, let's clean out this master cylinder. We're gonna have to do better than that. This reservoir is pretty clean at this point. Looks like the holes are open. Let's go get some brake fluid. In anticipation of having to bleed the brake lines, I invested in this nifty system. You've probably seen these, maybe used one. You hook up an air compressor source here, and when you inject air, the Venturi effect creates suction on this tube here. And you can take this tube and attach it to the bleeder valve and that uses suction to pull brake fluid from the master cylinder reservoir to bleed out all the air in the brake line. So I've never done this before, um, but I was interested in this system because I feel it gives you the option at least of doing this on your own without an assistant to pump on the brakes while you're you know, opening and closing the bleeder valve. I've read some good things about it. Like I said, never done it. Let's see how it works. brake fluid on there to make it easier to wiggle on maybe. Well, it's not pulling brake fluid through with suction alone. I'm not sure why. So I think I need to go to the old fashioned technique of having an assistant pump on the brakes while I open and close the valve here. Okay, push. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, keep it down. Now release. Down. This is not working, so there may be a blockage in the brake line. So I have two working theories as to why no brake fluid is being pushed down to the wheel cylinders. The first is that the brake lines are blocked off with residual old brake fluid sludge. That's probably the most likely. The other possibility is that this master cylinder is bad. So I wanna test both of those by first disconnecting this line here, and we'll just see if this master cylinder pumps any brake fluid out of here when we push on the brake.
All right, I'm gonna pump on the brake and you tell me if any fluid comes out of here. Now, I'm no expert on brakes, but th that does, doesn't seem like what you would call a working master cylinder. I, I don't know whether the connection to the, I guess, the piston in the master cylinder, is it, you'd think it would be stuck, but it's just loosely moving in and out. This also explains why our brake light is permanently on. The return spring for the master cylinder, that's what's not, uh, it's not kicking it back. And then I think the piston is probably stuck forward and the spring's not pushing this back. So yeah, we're looking at a complete rebuild of that master cylinder. One thing though is we do have this e-brake here. And as I look at the cable, I mean, it seems to be working, moving, and I hear in the back of the car, it seems to be engaging. So I could stop the car if needed. Might as well take off this line here too. Then we can see if we can blow air through the brake lines. You see how it, when you release, all that pressure comes back at you. Yeah, that's blowing right back at me. It's plugged. Is this thing plugged? Let's try this. That's fine. There's even brake fluid coming out that end. But I think we've got blocked off brake lines down there. I think we've also got a bad master cylinder. Here's the action of the emergency brake. Here's a look at the emergency brake action on the passenger side. Okay, I took a look at that and I do see some good movement of the brake pads. Whether that's adequate or not, I don't know. I didn't see much movement on the driver's side brake pads when I was applying the emergency brake. So, yeah, um, we at least should have some means of stopping or at least slowing down the car once we get it moving. All right, here's where we're at. We have a fuel jug in the back seat of the car connected to a rubber fuel line that runs on the outside of the car to a working fuel pump that does function to keep the engine running. The brakes are shot though. We've got a bad master cylinder and clogged brake lines. Even if we could unclog the brake lines, I'm not inclined to rehab or rebuild that master cylinder. It's a single master cylinder I'm going to put a dual master cylinder conversion in this car if I'm going to drive it around and feel safe in it. 
So there's no, really no point, even if I could rebuild that master cylinder, which I'm not 100% sure that I could, there's really no point in doing it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this car out and we're gonna drive it around my driveway. The good news is my driveway has a circle in it. So we're gonna take a few victory laps. That's what we're gonna do. That's a lot better. So I'm noticing something here. Doesn't seem right to me. This is sticking out a lot farther on this side than it is on the other side by a good half inch. Is that normal? I don't know. There's also this little ring here. It's just flapping in the breeze, you know? On the other side, this is firmly up against here. What does this mean? I don't know. These things are a mystery to me. Maybe I need to do a little research. Is that a normal sound? I don't know. It's a problem when you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what's normal and what isn't, you know what I mean? Could be normal. Is that fitting in normal? Is that gap normal? Is everything normal? I don't know. But I mean, it's back on the way it was before. It ought to at least roll around the driveway. This wheel wasn't stuck, so I'm less inclined to spend time cleaning it up. It's all gonna come off eventually anyway. We'll deal with that at a later time. Now see that gap, it's much more narrow. The other one's sticking out farther. I don't know. You know, one good thing about not getting this car completely roadworthy is one part of that would be I'd be obligated to get new tires for this car. And I was uncertain how to proceed with that because eventually I want to get nice classic tires, maybe from Coker Tire, maybe in some wide whites. I don't know. But buying them now doesn't make that much sense because I think it's going to be a while before it's time to really put them on the car. So I think I can limp around the driveway with these tires and we'll just leave it at that and put off buying new tires till a later date, which isn't a bad thing. It's just a trip around the driveway, but no reason we can't look good doing it. Look at this though. Kowalski M. This tire has some kind of name tag for Mr. Kowalski. Why? I, I don't know.
Well, this is it. The time has come. I'm going to get in this car, hopefully start it up. And if that works, I'm going to put it in gear and hopefully it's going to roll off this lift under its own power, moving under its own power for the first time since 1975. We'll then uh, take it for a little spin around the driveway. My only way of stopping this car is with the emergency brake, which I think works. So we got that. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> I don't even know if this clutch is going to work. No idea if the transmission, that's reverse. Should be interesting. Accelerator pedal works. I never even tried that yet. All right, let's uh, put it in gear. It'll be hard for me to remember. I don't have any brake. Put the emergency brake on for a sec. Keep reaching for the brake. Well, it slid into first gear. Take the e-brake off. Here we go. First time in 48 years. E-brake still sticking. Here we go. Oh yeah. See if the e-brake works. Yeah, made a terrible noise. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh she's moving. She's moving. E-brake on. She comes to a stop. Is that neutral? There's neutral. Okay, let's keep it going. I guess it's time for sunglasses. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day for a drive. Here we go. Oh, e-brake. Here we go. E-brake works. Whoa. The front hood just popped open. Can I take second gear? Oh, there we go. Oh. Yeah. She's moving right along. Yeah, she is. We're just going to go in circles. She turns left real nice. Just like they do at the Indy 500. That's what I'm feeling right now. I try not to get dizzy doing this. I'm in second gear right now. Stop for a minute. I forgot I can't stop. Let it cruise to a stop here. Put the e-brake on. Out of gear. Clutch out. I gotta close the hood up there. Popped open when the car transmission was chattering. It's idling real nice. Oh, I can't remember that. Emergency brake. Here we go. All right. That's a little rough, isn't it? We'll leave it first gear. Out for a little Sunday drive. Not bad, not bad at all. I like the top down. 
real nice. It's top-down weather. That's what this is. Can't beat it. I'm going to try reverse. It's going to let it slow to a stop here. Slow down to a stop. Cylinder head temp's coming up. want to go into reverse right now. Let me try to clutch out, clutch back in. Okay, okay. Did I do it? Oh, that's first gear again. Okay. Let's try it. Well, that seems like it kicked over. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 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 it's not easy driving backwards like this in a circle. It's an acquired skill. I'm learning it. Definitely an acquired skill. You've got to you got to be in your game to back up like this. I gotta say, I'm really glad I didn't try to take us out on the public streets. Woo! Let's try to get it in second gear, like we did before. Can it start in second gear? Yeah. <laughs> it sure can. Oh. She wants to jump though. She doesn't like going so slow. I mean, she's got some pep. She got some pep in her step. I'm not kidding you. Whoa, whoa, Nelly. Whoa, Nelly. There you go. You want you want a little more juice? I'm making tire tracks in this driveway. I'm halfway tempted to drive it into the yard, but the grass is a little soft right now. Don't want to drive it in the yard. Oh, come on. Yeah. All right. Slow down. Bring it to a stop. Hmm. There's smoke coming up in the cabin from under the dash. I wonder why. Should I be concerned? The temperature gauge is starting to come up now. Fuel gauge reads full. That's not true. I'll show you. Look at this. We've got a quarter tank. We've got plenty. Let's keep it going.
know, this car, I need to take it completely apart. Um, and I realize I, my ambitions exceed my knowledge and skill right now, but I'll be doing a lot of learning. Um, even if I don't achieve all the goals I want to achieve with this car, I think we need to keep this hobby alive. You know, there's fewer and fewer people who were around when these cars were new. And, uh, I certainly wasn't around when this car was new and we've got to learn if we want to keep the hobby going. That's just my thinking. So that's what I want to do with this car. You know, it may be unwise in other settings to take on a big project like this. But for me, it's just a learning laboratory. For now, I'm just trying to take it stepwise. I'll keep sharing it with you. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I've had a great time uh, today uh, getting this car out, getting it moving under its own power for the first time in many, many years. I had a lot of frustrating moments um, as I was trying to get this car started, as I was trying to get it moving. But on a day like this, you know, it feels really good. So I'm going to keep with it. Uh, keep with me, if you will. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. You can keep track of what I'm doing and uh, we'll keep going. Y'all take care and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.